I'm Aaron Rutten, a professional digital artist and art instructor, and today I'll be taking an in-depth look at Clip Studio Paint Pro. I've scored this app based on what I feel is important in digital art software. I'm looking at brush variety, natural media simulation, ease of use, and other important factors. And I'm only counting default content, not add-ons. Clip Studio Paint is an art application that is geared toward comic creation, animation, and general illustration. As you can tell by the UI, it was initially released in 2001, which makes it over 20 years old. There are two versions of Clip Studio Paint, Pro and EX. I'll be reviewing the Pro version, but I will mention how EX is different later in this review. And now on to the scoring. Let's start with the brushes in Clip Studio Paint Pro. The overall variety of default brushes is poor. These brushes should have stayed in 2001. If you're just doing line art and simple backgrounds, these brushes are fine, but you can get basic brushes like this in any free art application. The only remarkable thing about these brushes is that they can create vector strokes, but we'll come back to that. The brushes in Clip Studio Paint are quite customizable. Though there isn't anything very advanced, there's a good quantity and selection of properties. If we take a look at some of the organic media effects, you can see that they are quite poor in comparison to what many of the other art applications can do. The only benefit here is that the simple brushes do tend to perform better than complex ones. If you do not need to simulate natural media, then this is not as much of a concern. The blenders in Clip Studio Paint Pro do a good job of transparency blending. The airbrushes are pretty basic, as are the ink brushes and texture brushes. You won't find any particle brushes, but there are some excellent stamp brushes, which can create multiple stamps per stroke. Although there is a category of paint brushes, I wouldn't classify any of the variants as true impasto brushes, because they don't have any sort of paint depth. There is a category of watercolor brushes, but they are poor quality if judging by whether or not they have fluid dynamics. The pencil brushes are poor quality as well. Many art applications offer better pencils than this. There is a dual brush property which will let you make more complex dab shapes. And although the GPU is supported for the integrated 3D features, there isn't a GPU acceleration option or property. On to brush performance. The brush cursor options in Clip Studio Paint Pro are good. The max brush size is good at 2000 pixels. The brush resizing shortcuts are good. You can even resize the brush on screen by holding Ctrl plus Alt on Windows or Command plus Option on Mac and dragging. Clip Studio Paint Pro has brush stabilization and anti-aliasing properties. And brush calibration is okay because it's only a global setting. Let's take a peek at the transformation tools next. The transformation tools are good and have lots of modes. You can even transform groups and multiple layers. Distortion brushes are coming soon to Clip Studio Paint Pro. Clip Studio Paint Pro also has a mesh warp tool. This is a feature that all art apps should have. It's layers time. Support for layers is great in Clip Studio Paint Pro. There is a good selection of blend modes. You can lock transparent pixels. Masking works great. There are collapse layer options. And you can use delete as a clear layer shortcut. Let's see how saving is done in Clip Studio Paint Pro. You can export to Photoshop PSD, and the essential export file formats are all here, along with file options. There is also a crash recovery and autosave feature. Up next are the paper and canvas texture features. There are texture brush properties, but the selection of default textures isn't great. You can apply a paper or canvas texture as a background layer, but it is not dynamic. There is no texture randomization in Clip Studio Paint Pro, so your textures will tend to look unnatural. You can import custom papers and textures, and because there aren't really any brushes to support it, impasto and surface lighting controls are nowhere to be found. Let's see what's up with guides and grids in Clip Studio Paint Pro. The perspective guides in Clip Studio Paint Pro are the best I have ever used. While the guides work the same as in many other art apps, this one offers horizontal and vertical guide planes for each vanishing point. This makes it easy to keep things in proportion, a key component of perspective drawing. This is a must-have feature I wish were more common. There are additional guides like a ruler, you can draw with symmetry, and you can generate dynamic grids. We'll explore the panels and palettes in Clip Studio Paint Pro next. It has a good reference image panel. The ability to create custom brush palettes is limited to a quick access panel that is not very customizable. You can add shortcuts to the panel as well. The color picker customization and options are poor. You can toggle between the square HSV or triangular HLS color pickers. 
forget about any advanced color picker modes, that ain't gonna happen. You can proof your work in CMYK color and other modes, which is nice if you print. Clip Studio Paint Pro includes lots of color swatches. You cannot load multiple colors on your brush. With some tweaking, the approximate color panel is somewhat like color harmonies, but the harmony modes are limited to analogous and monochromatic. There is also a mixer that creates gradients between several colors. Color variability is also available in Clip Studio Paint Pro, but the brush properties are very basic. The canvas features are what we'll look at next. The new canvas dialog in Clip Studio Paint Pro is good. The max canvas size is humongous at 50,000 by 50,000 pixels. There are a good amount of canvas presets to choose from. There are even templates for comics and animation. You can resize the entire image, resize the canvas, or crop the canvas with standard tools. You can flip the canvas with a button in the navigator or set a custom shortcut for it. Clip Studio Paint Pro offers robust color profile options like you'd see in Photoshop. Multi-monitor support is good. And there is technically a grayscale preview mode for the canvas, but you have to create an effect layer first. Let's review the interface. The visual appearance and organization of Clip Studio Paint Pro is quite poor. It looks very early 2000s. I'm surprised they haven't really tried to modernize it much. One thing I really don't like is having to select the hard media tool first, then choose between pastels or pencils. Brush categories really should just be one folder deep, otherwise it creates a lot of unnecessary clicking. In terms of the interface ease of use, it's not easy to use. Everything is hard to find because there is just too much going on in the application. It feels too crowded. And the icons are rather bland, which doesn't help you distinguish one control from another. The default UI is not very minimal. In fact, it's just plain cluttered. You can, however, collapse docked panels to clean up the UI. You can customize the interface and palettes in Clip Studio Paint Pro. Though the options are adequate, they are not very advanced. You can easily export and import brushes and your layout. There's a healthy amount of preferences, no collaborative painting, and the number of features in Clip Studio Paint Pro I'd score as good. In fact, it's one of the most robust art applications out there since you can use it for art, animation, comics, and more. Let's see how Clip Studio Paint Pro performs with my drawing tablet. Pen pressure and tilt both feel good on my Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD, and I'm happy to say that the rotation expression is supported as well. Multi-touch input is very poor. I would probably leave it turned off. You can use your finger for painting or blending, but if you end up making a lot of accidental marks when navigating with touch, you can disable or customize single touch in the preferences. Clip Studio Paint Pro is one of the few art applications that can use the pen eraser as a brush or blender, though you have to enable this first in the modifier key settings. Unfortunately, you cannot also use independent pen settings to toggle between brushes. And Clip Studio Paint Pro does not have a dripping paint feature, so no accelerometer support. The last set of features we will explore are the tools. Clip Studio Paint Pro has a good selection of selection tools, and there is even a selection brush. The application contains a good text tool, a good paint bucket tool with gap detection that can fill using other layers as a reference, a good gradient tool, and good pattern creation tools. You can also work with basic vector tools in Clip Studio Paint Pro. And one feature that sets Clip Studio Paint Pro apart from many of the other art applications is that it supports vector brushes. This allows you to draw a stroke and then edit the stroke. It even works with paint brushes and blenders. Clip Studio Paint Pro has some good shape tools, not quite on the same level as Adobe Illustrator, but closer to what you'd find in Photoshop. There is a good selection of essential effects you can apply. Another unique feature in Clip Studio Paint Pro is that it has comic and manga panel tools. You can create the borders around each panel and easily add dynamic word bubbles. This is a really useful feature if you make comics, though you are limited to a single page, but I will come back to that. You can create time-lapse recordings of your artwork in this application and export them as videos. There is also a set of basic animation tools you can use to create GIFs and moving artwork. There is a limit of 24 animation frames, so if you want to make a cartoon, you'll need to purchase the more expensive Clip Studio Paint EX. This will give you access to unlimited animation frames, and you can create comics with more than one page that can be exported or printed. After that thorough evaluation of Clip Studio Paint Pro, Let's add up the points and check out the score. Clip Studio Paint Pro earns an objective score of 213 out of 273 possible points. If you want to see how this software ranks compared to other art apps, check out my Top 7 Digital Art Apps video. That's all for my review of Clip Studio Paint Pro. 
For more digital art reviews and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.